Good morning. Today is Thursday, October 3rd of 2024. This is the 277th weigh-in. Good morning. So, <laughs> my voice, okay. It's a little before uh, six o'clock. Um, I'm gonna get started on uh, building the app for what I call the community. So, about 10 years ago, I had an idea for a dating website app that I thought was we'll call it like the antidote to modern online dating. I think it takes all of the important aspects to real life mating and applies them to the online space. Um, so 10 years ago, I had this idea in 2021, I moved in a buddy from law school who had gone through a coding boot camp, and he said that he was ready to build it. He was excited. Um, he was a really close friend, you know, he called me brother, and he absolutely scammed me. So, he didn't build it at all. He fabricated um, screenshots and stuff to make me think that he was actually working. And instead, I was just spending tons of money on him, paying him directly, being basically a slave, trying to help him uh, while he built the app for us. And yeah, it was a total scam. So in 2022, I had nothing to show for it. I I got laid off in the, from my job, and uh, it's been it's been a rough <laughs> rough couple of years, we'll say. Uh, not that the hair or the dirty shirt is necessarily evidence of that, but um, so in April 7th of this year. In 2024, I finally had the idea. I was like, you know what? I know a lot about AI. Why not leverage it myself? Why not build build the website, build the app, you know? So I started with the website. I thought that'd be easier. And here we are almost six months later, and the website's ready. Now I'm going to build the app over the next three months. So the website is uh, jointhecommunity.org. And it is truly a community, so no ads, no subscriptions, no hiding matches, no limiting the number of swipes you do. Swipes are completely disconnected from dating in that you could propose a date to somebody day one. And why propose a date? Because there is no matching. There is no messaging. All there is is uh, basically two main pages. One is the competition page. You're, uh, you have the ability to either show men or women. And then you're showing two men or two women at a time. And you select the one that you find most desirable, the one you like the most, whatever. You just choose one to be the winner. Choose one to be the loser. So if you swipe right on one... The other one, it automatically swipes left on. Um, either swipe on them or you click on the corresponding side of their photo. So if you click on the right side of the photo, it automatically swipes to the right. And you can tell because the, the one that swipes, that moves to the right is uh, highlighted in green and the one that moves to the left is highlighted in red. So at any rate, the competitions page, um, there's uh, two different types of um, photos you'll see are what are called containers, basically like the date cards. Uh, one has an arrow in the upper left-hand corner. If you click that, it flips the card and it exposes their profile information and it has a propose a date button. That's, that means they're a full account and that means that you could, they, they want a date. If they don't have the arrow, it's just a photo only account. They just want to be rated. So there is no profile information and you cannot propose a date to them and they cannot propose a date to you. So based on these wins and losses, that's what brings us to the other main page, the rankings page. 
So here you can rank all men or all women. And they are basically just presented in, uh, in descending order of their winning percentage. So it's, it's as simple as it sounds. Uh, it sounds savage to rank people, but when you think about it, we have been ranked on a percentile basis since we were maybe six years old, the first time we took a standardized test. Even before that, when we're born, we're put on a percentile ranking of our height or our weight as infants. Uh, it's, it's just part of not only humanity, but it's part of being an earthling. Uh, competition, that's the name of the game. Scarcity. Uh, it doesn't matter how good your intentions are. If there is this one amazing guy or this one amazing girl, there's going to be a lot of people who want them, and we all have to compete. That's it. And um, the rankings just kind of shows how competitive you are. There are some people, so I, I truly believe everybody has at least one person out there who could truly love them and just feel like they won the lottery to be with them and have like a really happy life with them. I believe that. Um, I also believe that for some people, there are many people that would be really happy with them. And then for other people, there are far fewer. <laughs> At least in terms of interests, let's, let's just be honest, there are a lot more people who would want to be with, I don't know, man, I'm, I'm old, so some of my references are going to be dated. My brain always wants to go to Britney mm -hmm. Spears or Brad Pitt. Um, and then I just wanted to say like, Tom Brady or Taylor Swift, but I don't know, whatever. You you know uh, pop culture better than me. So um, whoever the hot athlete is today or the hot entertainer, let's just be honest, more people want to be with them. More people would go on dates with them than somebody who is a little less desirable. It's just the name of the game. So there are these two pages, right? You, swing, you, you decide who the winners are, and then there's a rankings page that shows where people are ranked. So on the rankings page, you can filter the results by profiles, meaning you could say, just show me Christians, and I want to see all the Christians that are ranked. I want to see tall people. I want to see white people, whatever. And I have all of these various dimensions based on the profiles. Not only that, you can rank by swiper. So what that means you could say, I want to see, I want to see women ranked according to short men. So then it looks at all of the profiles who have been swiping. It takes the ones that are short. And now you can see what are the type of people that short men prefer compared to tall men. What, what what kind of um, men do Hispanic women prefer versus black women? And the reason for all this data is so people can make informed choices and also so people can find um, the people who most appreciate them. And most on this point is when you click propose a date on somebody, a pop-up comes up and it shows you where you are ranked in their personal rankings and where they are ranked in yours. So let's say I'm like in the 50th percentile, I'm like dead metal, right? But I see a girl, I think she's kind of cute. I click the propose a date button. It turns out I'm in her top 10% and she's in my top 10%. Well, that's a pretty good match. <laughs> and especially the fact that I'm middle 50% according to other people. If she really likes my flavor, then that's a pretty good sign that we're a pretty good match. And then, you know, similarly, maybe I see a girl I really like and I'm in her bottom quarter. She just, she doesn't dig like pretty boys. She likes like a ruggedly handsome guy. She doesn't like the overly attractive type, you know. But um, I think that that feature might be the best because it's it's a quick little assessment of whether or not there is like not only mutual desire but whether or not they desire you because mutual desire at least for a man is not like the most important thing 
we would probably sooner want somebody that we desire a lot, they don't desire us much, than to find somebody where we have equal amounts of desire, right? Mutual desire. So once you propose a date, so if you, you're pretty confident in the, in, the, uh, competi yeah, in the match because you feel like they desire you, you know, a fair amount, um, you can propose a date. So again, no matching, no messaging. You click on the propose a date button and you pick out the, the date, the time, you say who's gonna pay. Uh, there's a Google Maps uh, autocomplete, so you can pick any, any place on the earth. And then you send the date proposal to them. The moment the proposal is sent, you are frozen out of the site. You can't go to any other page. You're just on a landing page that shows that person's profile and uh, talks about the date, right? Now, once you send the proposal, assuming they are not, they have not received a proposal from somebody else that they're currently considering, or they're not like about to go on a date. Once you send them a proposal and a lot, uh, if, if they actually accept dates from you, uh, from people like you. So anyone can propose a date to anybody so long as the, the recipient, the would-be recipient, hasn't blocked your gender. So that's the only, uh, the only blocks I have are, um, you can say, I don't want to receive any date proposals from this gender. And you can actually say it for both genders. So you could say, I don't want to uh, receive date proposals from anybody, but you could still propose dates. And then there's also a block if you receive a date proposal from somebody that you don't want to receive proposals from in the future, you could block them from sending you future proposals. But once you send them the proposal, they're also frozen out of their account. They can't do anything but make a decision on your date proposal. So once they're on this page, they can either accept it they could request a 30 second video on a topic of their choosing. So if they need to have uh, help making their decision, they can request that you send a video on pretty much anything. This is also like a little catfish filter to make sure people aren't catfishing. If anything, I would recommend everybody use the video option, but they don't have to. And uh, they could also edit the date proposal. They could counter it. So for some reason, I'm not available on Tuesday night at eight o'clock when you're proposing me a date. So then I just send right back, hey, what about Wednesday at six? Or you could decline it, right? And if you decline it, it instantly destroys the proposal. You're able to use the full site. They're able to use the full site. And that's it. Um, if you... If you edit the proposal, now you're waiting on them to respond to your proposal. And they could actually ask for a video uh, from you. So technically, you could go back and forth exchanging videos. If uh, you send a proposal, they request a video from you. And then you send them the video. Then they um, edit the date proposal. And now you're the recipient. And now you request a video from them. Like any system could be manipulated. Um, and in terms of like contact information, I did end up putting, um, one line in the, uh, date proposal form where you can say, you can put like your Instagram, your phone number. If you want to give contact information, that's fine. The reason why I have no messaging is I think the talking stage is the death of online dating. I think people get caught up talking for days or weeks wasting important conversation topics that should be enjoyed in person. You know, I don't think we should talk about how your mom died of cancer over text. Like, it just, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, I think that connection should be formed in person where it's more, first off, it's more authentic. You're actually getting a sense of who that person is rather than their persona or their attitude that they put off via text. Also, it's just really easy to disqualify somebody. I think this is why we talk about the ick. 
basically people are just looking for any excuse to disqualify another person. They're not looking for a reason to be with them. They're looking for a reason to not choose them because there's such a glut of opportunities, especially for a woman. If she has dozens of guys who are messaging her in any given moment, she's actually looking for, well, how do I figure out who I shouldn't want to be with out of this, this array of guys, right? So I do allow people to exchange information for whatever reason. Maybe you guys want to talk beforehand because you're just so excited. Maybe you're, you're uncomfortable with the idea of meeting somebody that you've never spoken with. So I don't want to completely cut that off, but I highly recommend if you've seen their photo, they seem attractive, you know, do the video, get a sense of who they are as a person, make sure that you feel that there's still that attraction from seeing them talk, hearing their voice, seeing them in motion. Uh, but spend your time online, man. That's, or I spend your time in person, getting to know them, connecting with them. That's how we've done it since time immemorial and our, you know, our, uh, our success rates were a lot higher. So let's let's try to return back to good old organic dating. Maybe that, that's how I should refer to it as organic dating online. Um, but once the proposal is accepted, you're, uh, there's like a countdown timer on, on the date page and you truly are frozen out. You can't go anywhere else on the page, uh, on the website. And then once the date, uh, the, the time of the date is arrived, um, has arrived, you are given a date review page. So both sides are able to review the date and it just has a few questions. It also has like a narrative box where you could just talk about your experience. And then this information will all be publicly available and it'll follow both of you around. And the reason why this is important, it, it adds a reputation element. So part of the reason why people treated people with some decency back in the day before online dating and why uh, ghosting wasn't a thing is you had to be careful about what reputation you were building. If Jenny treats Johnny like crap on a date, uh, other, other guys might not be as inclined to go on a date with Jenny. So by adding this reputation aspect, I hope people will be on their best behavior. And I think people will also be better at avoiding guys who, you know, men being the main source of menace in, um, in dating, uh, but to avoid guys or girls that probably aren't the best match for them, right? And having that like Yelp style review, I think that goes to the central goal of the community, which is helping people to not waste time on the wrong people and to spend more time trying to find the right people. And <clears throat> I think this is mo most acutely obvious with women who who are love bombed or enamored by guys who really don't see them as a potential mate but are attracted enough to them that they want to use them for sex for sexting for validation for fun whatever um, but the you know these women are seriously looking for a spouse and they've already had their fun and they don't want to waste their time. They don't want to waste their heart on Mr. Wrong anymore. And on Tinder, on Bumble, I think they're all built to allow those men to waste the time of those women. And the community is supposed to be completely opposite to that. And with women, with, uh, with men, I think a lot of men waste their time trying to win the wrong woman, the woman who, you know, yeah, I mean, maybe the guy can eventually wear her down after years in the friend zone, but the odds are so low and even the, the reward at the end, it's fool's gold. Um, if 
you have to wear somebody down, are they ever going to really love you? Maybe they'll tolerate you. Maybe they'll commit to you. But will you really have the rewarding relationship that you desire? So those are my thoughts. Join the community.org. Come, come join me. Uh, also, so this is my little addendum. Um, when you go on somebody's page to propose a date, you can actually see all of their history on the site. So you can see all the swipes they've done. You can see the matches, uh, the, the dates that they've gone on. Uh, you can see how other people assess them. So like cool little categories like uh, the biggest upsets. So let's say this girl is ranked number 50 out of 500 and she beat like the number two person. <laughs> Somebody thought that she was more desirable than even the number two person. The biggest upsets too. Uh, oh, you're, you're 400, but you beat the 80th person. So this person just like your flavor better. And I think this goes a long way to helping people understand how idiosyncratic dating is. It's not like, you know, it's not like football. The, the best team almost always beats the, the 10th best team. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter if somebody is number one on the site, if they're a tall blonde and you're into brunettes. Uh, now, chances are you're going to choose the tall blonde more often than others. But um, you're never going to choose them over somebody that is your flavor because your innate preference for that type is going to uh, overwhelm any instinct about how this person is like objectively the, the standard of beauty, right? You're always going to prefer what you prefer. This isn't an academic exercise. This is based on your heart. You know, this is based on your intuition, your instinct, your genetics. So you're going to prefer what you're going to prefer. And I think this could both embolden and humble us. So, for instance, um, I'm in a club. I see a girl and I see a guy uh, who is trying to hit on her and he's having mixed success let's say he's unsuccessful and then i think about hitting on her but i tell myself you know what that guy is objectively more attractive than me and she rejected his advances why would she accept my advances well little do i know uh if i had access to all of her swipes maybe she's into bigger guys maybe she's into guys who have long hair maybe she's into guys who have beards Maybe she has guys who have striking, piercing olive eyes that just melt your heart, you know. And maybe that guy, uh, yeah, maybe he was too thin for her type. Maybe he's too ethnic for her, whatever. Um, just because I think he is objectively better looking than me, it doesn't mean he has a better chance with her. Uh, similar, so I think that once you see that that sometimes like the underdog wins it it helps to reinforce this notion in people that everybody has their own preferences and for men this is important you never want to limit yourself and make what could be a yes into a no because you just self-select out you say oh no way would she ever accept my advance so i think it could actually like train people to be more bold in person and then I think it could also humble people. So especially women who think that they're tens or who think that they're so beautiful. It's like even the ones who are tens, they're not going to be selected 100% of the time. There are going to be times where uh, somebody in the middle of the pack beats them just based on preference. Just because, you know, this very pretty Indian girl who is number 50 and then there's this like tall blonde model who's number one. And there's an Indian guy who likes Indian women and he chooses the number 50 Indian girl. It's like, it, he's not saying that she is in, uh, inherently better looking than number one, but he prefers number 50. And number one needs to uh, accept that, you know? So that's the other big thing. And then uh, also one million, uh, one million members or we'll say 1 million photos, one, 1 million accounts.
by January 1st of 2025. So 90 days. Let's get it. Um, does baby, baby want to go for walkies? Stevie baby go, you want to go across the street? Go see bunnies? Key cats? Want to go see key cats and pup pups? I think he does. I think he's a good boy. Let me see the yawn. Oh, uh, you got yawn. Uh, oh, it's a good boy. Now I know you need the walkies. Okay, let's do it. Hey there. Man, I'm so glad I took this break over. This is the last week. I mean, time's all blurred, but I want to say it was... So today's Thursday. Oh, there's Thor's best friend, the key cat. Oh, he's been circling around. No wonder why. Thor's been circling a little bit, probably because you can smell the cat. Um, so... I think it was last Wednesday night, was it, that I realized I was able to fix that problem I was working on for several days. And as it turned out, I basically took the last week off. Uh, wasn't intending to at the time, but I just found my motivation lower. I was a little heartbroken, a little browbeaten from that experience. So I think he went back in that alley. Oh, there's the key cat. Oh, that's your best friend, Thor. You want to go find him? Here, he's going to be this way. Yeah, we'll go around the block. So, um, as it turned out, I took a week off. And I'm just so revitalized and so excited to move forward. Come on, Thor. Before, I was a little weary, a little broken down. And uh, now, ideas are just flooding my mind for videos, for marketing. I've already built the framework of the app. Come on, Thor. I've built, uh, built the environment. I actually understand how to build the app now. And that was a huge barrier. Before, I was like trying to build it in Xcode, but that wasn't right at all. So now I, I basically, I already have like the landing page and all the toolbars. So the header, the footer, and all the separate pages. And so now I'm gonna diagram my whole site and figure out exactly what I have to build for the app and so I'm excited about the app it feels a lot more in reach now the marketing having all these ideas and yeah it's exciting but it shows how important it is sometimes to take the rest and it wasn't even intentional it wasn't like I made a decision my my body just made me my mind just made me uh, I've done some work in the last week but basically it's been a week off like the calm before the storm and now I'm ready for another sprint so I think I'd probably done like what since June 7th so yeah almost uh three months oh no almost four months June July August September yeah because we're in October wow time flies and now I have uh 90 days left in the year so we're going to do lots of walkies, right, Thor? We're going to strike every day. We're going to lift every day. We're going to build the app. We're going to market the website, do fixes on the website. And uh, we're going to change our lives, right, Thor? Got 90 days, right? Those, those sad people, they, they become fiancés for 90 days and decide on their partners. And instead, you and I are going to become rich and we're going to help people. Yeah. 90 days we're gonna become thin Thor's going on a diet <laughs> he loves going on diets chicken and burgers and sweet potatoes and these pumpkin treats we make no more pizza or pasta he's gotta be a good boy but uh yeah race to a million users and so part of the reason I'm doing this is uh I heard Adam Sandler talk about delusion and how much it helped him when he was younger. And it reminded me of when I was studying for the LSAT, I told myself, which was crazy, that I had uh, 10 weeks to get a 180, which is a perfect score on the LSAT. Uh, up until that point, I think my score I'd gotten on like a practice test was like 158. I hadn't studied that much. Um, I got 155 on my diagnostic, which is like eh, slightly above average. So I told myself, okay, I'm gonna take a test every two day, uh, two t tests a week for 10 weeks, and I'm gonna study like crazy in between. 
And sure enough, I took 20 practice tests in 10 weeks. I think my highest was 174 and the average uh, range, you know, like most of them by the end of it ended up between like 169 and 171. And then I ended up getting 166, so didn't do as well as I had hoped. But the point was I saw a huge improvement. And even though, you know, they laughed at me online, I, I was keeping a, a thread on toplawschools.com. Ah, I don't know if I should expose that. So at any rate, um, and they, you know, they like changed the thread title to uh, 10 weeks to 166 to mock me. But it, it was all in good fun. Like they, they were supportive and they appreciated the fact that like the man who shoots for the moon and fails finds himself among the stars. It, it doesn't matter that you actually achieve the, the goal in the long run, like, or at least that's how we cope with it when we fail. Um, <laughs> obviously I would have preferred to get a 180 and just like now with this 1 million goal, the point is, if I told myself, let me just try to grow it as much as possible, maybe I end up with a few hundred, maybe I end up with a few thousand, maybe I end up with a million, but there's no way I'll put the level of effort and dedication into it as if I tell myself I have to get to a million and I, good, and I put forth a good faith effort where like, even, even if on some level I'm like, ah, I'm probably not gonna hit it, if I'm actually trying to and taking the steps as if I really believed. Um, now maybe it would help to just really believe it and not hold myself back while so if I'm able to do that then great. I mean I really do believe it is possible. I do not believe it's necessarily completely in my control. Like I think there are paths forward, but I don't think that I'm the determining factor as to whether or not on one of those paths. I think luck plays a big role in it. Uh, but the harder you work, the luckier you get. So um, maybe it's time for me to finally take off the suppressant I use to excuse my failures. You know, like John Jones partying every week before a fight. He does coke and gets drunk just so he has a built-in excuse. If he loses the fight, he, he'd say, oh, well, you know, I, I partied the weekend before. So I hope not to do that this time. So I really do believe I could get a million, and I, I believe I will. Do I believe I will, or do I want to believe I will? I don't know, and uh, that's something I'll work on. But what I do know is, I, like I said, I'm being flooded with ideas, and it's just a matter of refining them, implementing them, just uh, never stop, never stopping, right? Okay, one love. Hello there. Okay, let's get back to it. Good morning thus far, nice and productive. And on track with everything, so it's feeling good. something but I'd be able to pivot real quickly. So that's good. What else? Yeah no hesitation, just uh, forward momentum. Time to hesitate is through as it were. Oh, 
Okay. Let's do it. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. T -t 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 tell me lies, all of them. Gosh, this hair is good. Real big. It's funny how that works. It just keeps growing, huh? Do, 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 I feel like I'm a gymnast, like putting my hands up every time. Snapping, cracking, and popping. Just what you like to hear. Tell me lies, tell me Oh, yeah. Okay. Just thinking about how I was supposed to go to a fight on Sunday night with my buddy, and I was thinking, oh, maybe I should work instead. And then I was like, well, actually, maybe I should work at the fight. Maybe I should talk talk people up and see it as you know, it's a crowd of thousands, and when we're all just sitting around waiting in between fights and stuff, or doing the pre car the uh, the early fights, the prelims, maybe I should be yeah going with my buddy, talking to people and promoting the site. That's, I have to start rethinking what my normal thought processes are about, you know, not wanting to bother people or infringe upon people. It's like, ultimately, if I think I'm giving something of high value to people, I'm not bothering them. I'm doing them a favor. And yeah, maybe half of them I'm bothering, but in order to help the other half, I think that's an acceptable cost. I'm not gonna get to a million by being polite. <laughs> don't have to be rude either, but I don't have to be polite. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, in there like that. That's, oh, that's interesting. Oh. Only slightly uncomfortable. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, okay. And let's load it back up.
yeah. Okay, let's keep it pushing, friends. Good afternoon. Okay, got some more to high flies. Greek yogurt and pizza. Not a bad time. Yeah, it turned out there was a couple of things in my site that weren't working very well. And uh, one thing I accidentally deleted one ago. code. I don't know how long ago, just been a while ago. It stopped something from working. So uh, I had to do troubleshooting for a few hours today. Several hours. It's the time I was hoping to be spending marketing, but that's what I'll do after this. Signed up for TikTok. Getting ready. Okay. Oh yeah. So I gotta do some video stuff. Get caught up. I might do that right after this. Get that out of the way. Oh. Goodness. Okay. Ah, oh, front raise. Do I even subject myself to this? We'll see. Lightweight, baby. 
Oh, oh yeah. Ooh. Dang, that fatigue's hard <laughs> real quick. Ooh. Well, we'll take it. See you in a bit. Two hours to be exact. So I'd like to be a little honest about the nature of my, my addiction, nature of my weakness. It's, you know, I don't, I don't crack and have a cookie or eat a little extra. When I, when I break, it's like the dam breaks and I don't know what it is. Like even right now, like you'd think I'd be sated by the fact that I've already had four of these donuts. These are the other four and uh, I've already had two Oreos. Uh, or three or four, whatever. And I, I mean, I can't say I'm hungry. Like, I think I'm full. I don't even think I feel well, but the nature of it is I'm going to eat this whole plate. Why? Oh, Thor. Thor's like, I'll take it from you, Steve. I'll bite the bullet. Um, I don't know, just pure, uh, unadulterated addiction. Uh, is it... Is it the carb spike in my brain? Is it the, the haze that takes away the stress from my life? Like, I don't know what it is. And it's like, could I stop it? Like, yes, I could. Do I want to? No. And that's, that's, that's one of the like most dangerous parts. But um, yeah, that's, that's the nature of things. This is gonna be about 4,000 calories after I've only eaten 1,000 for the day, but yeah, I know, I know I got to figure it out. And I know when I had a handle on things for those 12 weeks, I told myself I should just never eat these pastries again, that like I can't control myself. And sure enough, I had it and it was okay. I had another one, it was okay. A few more and it was okay. And then, yeah, I just, I don't know what it is with Swiss cake rolls and the pies and then the texture of the donuts, Entman's donuts. I mean, my goodness. So... I don't know what it is, but like I said, I gotta figure it out. And I just wanna be honest about it. Like a lot of the eating I've been doing, I haven't been tracking or posting photos of. So I guess this is a bit of a honest come to Jesus moment, so. Thor, look at you. You don't want that. You don't want any of this. It's no good for you. It's no good for children. It causes cancer, it's unhealthy. There's lots of problems with it get fatter. It's just, it's just no bueno. I mean, I'm basically going to consume a pound of fat right now. I'm going to add a pound of fat to my already fat body. Baby, why are you being a good boy over there? Baby, why are you staring at me? Are you channeling God? Are you trying to reach me? Trying to prevent me from doing great evil? Oh, you good boy. One love.